I'm done uh, rebuilding this engine. I replaced the front bearings and the front housing here, the front and rear bearings and the front housing. <clears throat> Got everything else together. The last step I need to do now is set the valve timing. Once I set the timing, I'm going to take it outside and we'll see how it runs. Now these OS engines, the older ones anyway, come with a nice uh, set of feeler gauges. Actually, you get two feeler gauges. One's a 0.1 millimeter and one's a 0.004 millimeter and I like to call them the go-no-go -no -go gauges. The 0.04 I usually set so that it just nips on that. Uh, the 0.1 millimeter when you set this it should not fit in there. So I'm going to go through the procedure here real quick. First thing we need to do is we need to make sure our crankshaft is at top dead center on the compression stroke and right now it is but I'm going to rotate it through so you can see Hopefully see, hi Chloe, see that, that exhaust valve moving, now the intake valve moving down, now we're going to bring it into compression and stop it at the top. Now the other thing you can do is you know, pop loose the glow plug so there's not quite as much compression. The other thing that's nice on this older engine is that at top dead center there's a mark on the drive washer. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it there or not. It's like a T. It's really kind of hard to see. A little scribe. But the other thing you can do is these are locked in place with a Woodruff key. Let me take this stuff off real quick. The Woodruff key is at the bottom of top dead center opposite of the top of the crank. So that's also another indication where you can tell the woodruff key is right here and I'm on top dead center now so I can check my valves uh, you can kind of lift up on them and since I've had this engine apart and I've got the exhaust and or at least there's a 50 50 shot that I've got the exhaust and intake rocker arm uh, in the wrong spot I need to check them anyway so the first thing we're going to do is I've got a little wrench here and it just so happens to be a 1564 so I don't have the metric equivalent I'm just going to break loose these locking nuts and then with a small allen key that fits in here properly I'm going to go ahead and get it engaged in the top of the set screw and I'm going to insert the 0 .004 millimeter feeler gauge you can see how that just goes in there and I'm just going to start to rotate this counter clock or clockwise until it just starts to nip that that's actually why these things are angled so you can do it like this okay it's kind of nipping it a little too hard there let me back it off just a hair I just want it to barely be nipping it and then I'm going to hold this allen key and retighten the locking nut hold it in place so now I should feel just a small amount of tension when I do that now the what I call the no-go gauge the 0.1 millimeter gauge should not fit in there at all so that's the proper way to set that intake and the exhaust this time I'm just gonna pop loose the glow plug and after I set one of them, I usually just kind of rotate it through a couple times and then recheck it. Stop at the top, get my no go gauge. Still no go there. Still good there, and I feel a slight nip. Okay, so now I do the same thing on the exhaust valve. that until I feel I'll just start to nip that hold it in place tighten our lock nut I don't have to put a lot of torque on them okay so it's just nipping it there and the go no gauge says no go Make sure that this 
kind of slipped off. Make sure this. Okay, that's tight. Rotate it through a couple times here. Check them both for no go, no go, no go, go, go. All right, so now these valves are set properly and ready to put the head cover or the valve cover back on and take it out for a run. So let's do that.